Now let us take this numerical, you know, which is there here at 3.7. The op amp of problem 3-4 is used in a voltage follower. Compute the closed loop parameters AF, RIF, ROF, FF and VOOT, right? Amplification with feedback, input resistance with feedback, output resistance with feedback. You know, this is, uh, you can say bandwidth or might be, you know, the upper uh, cutoff frequency of the bandwidth with feedback. And this is the, you know, offset, output offset voltage. <coughs> so, if you see over here, this is the voltage follower. So under the voltage follower, we have all these formulas. AF is equal to 1. RIF is equal to ARI. ROF is equal to R0 by A. FF is equal to AF0. VOT is equal to plus R minus V side by A. Okay. So that just means that we need to take the problem 3-4, which is there over here. So AF will be equal to 1. RI will be equal to RIF is equal to A into RI. So that means the RI is this. A into RI will be, you know, this multiplied by this, that will be RIF. So it will be so huge. 33 meg ohms multiplied by, you know, uh, 4 lakh value will be very huge, right? So much more than, you know, uh, quite a lot of giga ohms. 400 into 33 giga ohms. Oh, R0 will be 60 by 4 lakhs. Okay, R0 F will be 60 by 4 lakhs. Okay, because that is the formula there. FF will be A F0, right? FF will be A F0. So we are given with this unity gain bandwidth of something like, you know, uh, 0.6, right? So this has to be multiplied with the value of the uh, A to get the value of the FF, right? A F naught. So V O O T is plus or minus V set by A. V set, we know it's given here. Again, this is the voltage swing plus or minus 13 volts divided by the value of A, which is this. That will be V O O T. Okay. Now let us go to the next problem. So the next problem is 3-8. The 741 C is configured as an inverting amplifier as shown in the figure 3-8. With R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm, RF equal to 10 kilo ohm, calculate the exact closed loop gain. Calculate the ideal closed loop gain. Compare and explain the results of part A and part B. So we have to go for the inverting amplifier. So inverting amplifier is uh, after this. This is the inverting amplifier itself. Voltage shunt feedback. Okay. <laughs> exact is here. Ideal is here. But generally we might not consider this. We might as well consider you know, this. As the exact one. Okay. This is the ideal one and this is the exact one. Minus a k by 1 plus a beta, where k is equal to rf by r1 plus rf, b or beta is r1 by r1 plus rf. Okay. These two things we should remember. Uh, k is rf by r1 plus rf, beta or b is r1 by r1 plus rf. rf is the feedback resistor okay which appears between the output and the input of the op amp so that is the value of the af in the you know uh, exact case this is the ideal case which is minus rf by r1 okay the whatever exact is written here is simplified and written over here you can as well use this formula also arf divided by r1 plus rf plus ar1 or you can use this formula, whichever you feel is simpler. Okay, 
So if you feel that AF is equal to minus ARF by R1 plus RF plus AR1 is simpler, you use that and find the value of AF exact. Then we have the exact is over, ideal is over, ideal is minus RF by R1, compare and explain the results of part A and part B. So which one is higher and which one is lower and why is what we can consider. And that will be clear from this formula itself, right? So if you see over here, right, if R1 is much larger than, you know, RF, if R1 is much larger than RF, this can be neglected. So we will be left with A by 1 plus, you know, A by 1 plus A into, you know, A into RF divided by 1 plus A into R1. So again, A is very much larger than 1, then under that case, it will become RF by R1. So when R1, you know, is much larger than the value of RF, if R1 is much larger than the value of RF, then this is all right. The exact case will work out. Or even for that matter, if AR1 is much larger than R1 plus RF, okay? If AR1 is much larger than this, then, you know, this you can neglect. So AA will cancel. We are left with RF by R1. That is what is the case. So what will happen is the ideal case of RF will be larger the exact value will be a little lower, a little lower, not much, but a little lower, okay? Because we have an extra term here, RF plus R1 plus RF, okay? In addition to this, you know, ARF by AR1, which is same as RF by R1, we have here R1 plus RF. So this will be smaller than this, okay? Because of the formula, this will be the exact value will be a little lesser than the ideal case. Okay. <laughs> Repeat the problem 3.8 with R1 equal to 100 ohms. So here it is 1 kilo ohm. Again, we can repeat it for 100 ohms. Okay. So it is better you take a pen and a paper and try to write all these things, whatever formulas I am showing. Okay. I am not, you know, doing the exact solution, but telling you the method. So for that, you need to observe the, you know, video again, if you are not writing down. If you are writing down, then it becomes simpler. Okay. Then we have 714C is connected as an inverting amplifier. It is 741C uh, is connected as an inverting amplifier with R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm and RF equal to 4.7 kilo ohm. Compute the closed loop parameters AF, uh, RIF, ROF, FF, and OOT. Okay, all these values we can find out. For the case of the inverting amplifier. For the case of inverting amplifiers. So for that, again, we can go back here. We know the, <coughs> you know, the what you call AF value. AF value is the ideal case which we can write. Then RIF, we can try to see how it is changing. Okay, ideal case. Then here, input resistance with feedback. So here the input resistance with feedback is RIF is equal to R1 plus RF by 1 plus A in parallel with RI. Okay, this is the exact formula which we should follow. Okay, this is the ideal one. So even this you can write RIF plus R1. R you can write, you know, RIF is equal to R1. RIF is equal to R1. R, the exact value will be, this is equal to not plus. Okay, this plus is a mistake. RIF is equal to R1. R you can write the exact value, this is a better solution because you'll get more accurate value. Output resistance is ROF is equal to R0 by 1 plus A beta. Okay, this will not change. ROF is equal to R0 by 1 plus A beta. Then the bandwidth is the UGB divided by A into 1 plus A beta. 
or we can always say ff is equal to f naught into one plus a beta f naught is the you know uh, bandwidth without the you know uh, feedback or if we have the unity gain bandwidth that has to be considered unity gain bandwidth and for a 741 ic this is generally considered as 10 to the power of 6 okay 1 into 10 to the power of 6 1 megahertz okay so you need to divide it by a and multiply it by a plus a beta but however you can also do this if you already know a f then you can write k by a f okay f f is equal to u g b into k by a f where k is this value okay so might be the better thing would be this formula right where beta is equal to you know r1 by r1 plus rf r1 by r1 plus rf okay use this formula above to get the value of the you know uh, what you call <coughs> bandwidth with feedback so band ff is over and next is oot next is oot so oot is the value which again we need to find out we would oot is plus r minus v side by one plus a b again same thing oot is equal to plus r minus v side by one plus a b okay so using this we can try to find out in the earlier case how much was the what you call OOT for a uh, what you call non-inverting amplifier let us see that so whatever difference in formulas are there we need to see that so here it is divided by a for a uh, what is this this is nothing but the you know uh, voltage follower okay this is for a voltage follower whereas uh, okay this is for a you know mm, non-inverting amplifier so inverting and non-inverting will be same voltage follower will be with beta equal to one so therefore it will be one plus a one plus a is almost equal to a that's why a one plus a beta will be almost equal to a that is what is considered for a voltage follower so either way whether it is in you know uh, what you call uh, inverting amplifier or non-inverting amplifier vot is equal to plus r minus v side by one plus a beta and for a voltage follower you know beta is one and one is smaller than a therefore it is v sat by a okay so thus we can find the v o o t v o o t right so again repeat the problem 3.10 with rf equal to 1 kilo ohm what is the name of this circuit okay if rf is equal to 1 kilo ohm and r1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm what is the name of the circuit can somebody tell if both rf and r1 can somebody put in the chat box in case of an inverting amplifier if both rf now he says rf equal to 1 kilo ohm in place of 4.7 r1 is already 1 kilo ohm what is the uh, what you call what do you call that circuit if both r1 and rf in case of a inverting amplifier are same what does this circuit become is everybody with me? You can put it in the chat box. Unity feedback, unity feedback. Okay. It's not unity feedback. Circuit. What can you call it? What will be the gain if RF is equal to R1 in case of an inverting amplifier? Yeah. Minus 1. 
So minus one will give you, what is minus one multiplied by minus one? If you multiply something with minus one, what will you get? Say if you multiply with five, yes. If you multiply with five minus one, you'll get minus five. That is inverting or inverter. That is what is more important, okay? So rather than you know telling negative feedback and inverting, the right word is the inverting amplifier is going to become a inverter if we have rf is equal to r1 if in case of an inverting amplifier if rf becomes equal to r1 then it will become an inverter okay because it just changes the sign of the value it just changes the sign of the value okay so let us go for the you know in 3.8 what is the value of a let us see a what is the value of a okay r1 is 1 kilo ohm rf is equal to 10 kilo ohm why do you need a exact closed loop gain yes in case of exact closed loop gain you need the value of a right 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 so he has not given in case of ideal, fine, it is RF by R1. Whereas in exact, you need the value of A. Okay, so he has not given. So use the value which is given over here, something like, you know, 4 lakhs. Okay, might be because he has given here 714C. So this is 741C. Okay, 741C has he given somewhere? Okay, 741C it is 200, okay. 741C it is 200,000, uh, 200,000 is A. And the 714C, 714C is 400,000, 4 lakhs, okay. So here the problem is for 741C, so A value will be equal to 200, thousand that is two lakhs okay you have to take two lakhs fine so in this problem then again repeat the problem with r1 equal to 100 is given there then the 714 is connected as inverting amplifier to the r1 equal to 1 kilo ohm and rf equal to 4.7 compute the closed loop values all that is done this is 714 right so this is 714, please remember that 714, the values are given here. 741, the values are given here. So those are two different op amps, okay? Those are two different op amps. So unity gain, you know, bandwidth for this is 0.6 kilohertz for 714C. For 741C, it is one megahertz okay they should ideally give if they don't give then might be you can you know remember that it's better that you know you remember sometimes but even if ideally speaking it should be given to you so don't worry about it okay so then 11 is what i said rf equal to one kilo ohm r1 also one kilo ohm circuit is known as a inverter okay for the next 3.112 for the inverting amplifier of 3.10, V in equal to one volt peak to peak sine wave at 100 hertz. Compute the voltage, you know, output voltage V naught. Okay, 3.10, this one. So at that time, the gain is minus RF by R1, that is 4.7. Okay, minus 4.7. So now the output voltage you know, will be minus 4.7 volts peak to peak. Output voltage will be gain into the input. So that will become minus 4.7 volt peak to peak. That means whatever, you know, input is there, will get an inver inverted value, but amplified by 4.7. But amplified by 4.7 times. Because we have here, the value which is 4.7 and 3.10.
okay so that is that is the solution for that so you need to draw corresponding to that compute means v naught is equal to minus 4.7 volts peak to peak draw means you should be able to draw the waveform for that so already i think in one case the in the book he has drawn the figure so only that the peak to peak of the output should be you know 4.7 and 4.7 in place of uh, you know uh, how much one volt input will be one volt you know peak to peak sine wave right this will be 4.7 peak to peak sine wave peak to peak when you say it will be 0.5 above 0.5 below 0.5 above 0.5 below 4.7 peak to peak means 2.35 above 2.35 below the zero line okay if i say v in equal to 1 volt peak to peak please remember that when we talk about the v in equal to 1 volt peak to peak sine wave then above the zero level it will be 0.5 below the zero level it will be 0.5 so when you amplify it by minus 4.7 then it will be 2.35 above and 2.35 below right but inverted okay so inverted i think we have already seen the waveform in one of the problems in the solved example most probably it is there No, it's given somewhere. Yes, like this. Okay, this is inversion. You can see that. Peak to peak here it is again one volt only, right? This is amplified, you know, might be ten times. Okay, it is amplified ten times. Let us see what he has written here. Okay, one volt peak to peak. Yes, this also is one volt peak to peak. So one volt peak to peak. The output is, you know, you have the what you call where is it? okay v naught is minus 10 volts peak to peak here in this problem so therefore you know uh, minus 10 volts peak to peak is minus 5 to plus 5 but inversion when there's a positive cycle here there's a negative cycle here when there is a negative cycle here there's a positive cycle here that is the difference okay this is the negative cycle and this is the positive cycle so waveform will be same like this only except that here input will be same output will be waveform will be same only that this is minus 2.35 this will be plus 2.35 because the amplification is 4.7 okay the amplification is 4.7 okay next is the input current okay this is current to voltage converter so this is not in our syllabus we will not bother about it okay so then we will go for the 6.1 6.1 is somewhere here okay so this is 6. Point, uh, what you call 2 dc dc amplifier we have to go for this dc dc amplifier okay this is there in our syllabus so after the you know bandwidth with feedback we have dc and ac amplifier dc and ac amplifier so this is 6.2 and those are the problems which we should check over here so in the circuit of figure 6.1a so is it 6.1a yes this is 6.1a right 
6.1a where the input is connected you can see that the input is connected to the resistance then you have the feedback amplifier and then you have added some you know compensation load resistor resistor at the you know between the ground and the plus point then some sort of nullifying circuit okay let us not bother about this this is the whole circuit for the present okay so what is the type of amplifier you have here can somebody tell by seeing this gain we should be able to tell or by seeing this resistors we should be able to tell what is the type of amplifier we have similarly by seeing this input here okay and this is grounded and this resistance and then the gain like this we can tell what type of amplifier is this so what is this amplifier and what is this amplifier can somebody write in the chat can somebody write in the chat yes What is this amplifier and this amplifier? Gain is here like this and gain is here like this. This is the gain for A and B. So the first one is the inverting amplifier. The second one is the non-inverting amplifier, right? The first one is the inverting amplifier and the second one is the non-inverting amplifier, okay? So first one is inverting, second one is non-inverting. If you combine these two, really speaking, you'll get something like this, right? But with a resistor here, right? So this will become a, what you call differential amplifier with, you know, gain like this r2 by r1 or rf by r1 multiplied by v2 minus v1 okay so this is this is really speaking not there in our syllabus but you know it's sometimes better to know however we will not bother about this as far as the ia is concerned okay but it is always better to know that if we derive the relationship it will be minus of r2 by r1 rf by r1 into VA minus VB might be, or V1 minus V2, or V2 minus V1, whatever, depending upon the, you know, place where we put the value, okay? So, if we put V1 here at the, you know, minus point, and V2 at the plus point, then it will be, you know, uh, R2 by R1 into V2 minus V1. V2 will be corresponding to positive, and v1 will be corresponding to the negative terminal okay depending upon that so you can just expand this and check it what it is okay i can't see that vx minus vy vx minus vy he has written so vx is here and vy is here vx is connected to negative that therefore you know when vx is connected here therefore this is minus okay otherwise you can write you know, R, uh, F minus R1, RF by R1, uh, multiplied by this minus this, by VY minus VX. Does not matter whichever way you want. You, you don't want to write this minus sign here. You need to reverse this. Okay, if you write a minus sign here, then it is VX minus VY, where VX is connected to inverting terminal, and VY is converting connected to non-inverting terminal. Fine. So let us go for the uh, next example. So what is written here? Six RF is equal to 4.71 kilo ohms. 4.7 kilo ohms. R1 equal to 100 ohms. RL equal to 10 kilo ohms. ROM equal to 100. Determine the output voltage. We not if V in is 100 millivolt. So 6.1 A is inverting amplifier. So gain is minus RF by R1. 4.7 kilo ohm by 100 kilo ohm will naturally become 47. So 
when the input is 100 millivolts, okay, 47 by 100 millivolts will give you 4700 millivolts, that is 4.7 volts. 4.7 volts will be the value of V0, right? V0 will be, now he has not given peak to peak, so we don't bother about peak to peak. Okay, if, because he has written V in equal to 100 millivolts, we'll write V0 also is equal to uh, 47 into 100, that is equal to four, you know, point seven volts. Okay, so repeat the problem 6.1 for the figure 6.1b. That means for the non-inverting amplifier. So at that time we will have, you know, one plus RF by R1, one plus RF by R1. So that will give you 5.7 volts positive 5.7 volts here it is minus 4.7 volts here it is 4.7 volts uh, 5.7 volts positive okay then we have for the non-inverting amplifier of figure 6.3b rn is equal to the uh, you know 50 kilo ohms 50 ohms uh, C1 equal to 0 0.01 microfarad, R1 equal to 1 kilo ohms, ROM is equal to 820 ohms, RF equal to 5.6 kilo ohms, RL equal to 10 kilo ohms. Determine the gain and the bandwidth of the amplifier. So non-inverting just means again RF divided by 1 plus RF by R1. 1 plus RF by R1 will be the gain. Or RF plus R1 by R1. Okay, that will be the gain. The bandwidth, again, we need to use the corresponding formulas, right? So we'll go back to this and see the corresponding formulas. I think we are uh, almost done with one minute. So we'll take up in the next session. So I'll stop the share temporarily. Right. So we'll take it in the next session because we are left only with one minute. We'll take up the uh, solution of that problem. Okay. So I'll end this recording.